Hello and welcome back to Bug Rounds. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly, so if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. Now unfortunately it's not going to be a happy video today folks. We are going to be talking about when it is okay and if it is okay to euthanise one of your invertebrates. Now this video is specifically about one of my stick insects, but I will talk about it as a whole because I think it's a bit of a taboo subject, it's got a lot of confliction um, between people's opinions. So I cannot tell you what is right and what is wrong, I can only tell you my personal opinion. And to me, it's not the same as with cats and dogs. We still love them the same, invertebrate keepers. I would love all of my inverts the same as I would if I had a cute, furry, cuddly animal. But I mean, if you were to take a dog or a cat to the vets and that animal had no chance of survival and was suffering, that vet will euthanize, meaning, if you didn't know, put the animal to sleep, end its life as humanely as possible, that pet, so that it is no longer suffering. And people pay for this to happen. Now, at least where I live, there isn't really a vet that deals in invertebrates. Um, and it, it can just be a little bit silly sometimes to have a vet do that for you and pay out silly money for them to just end your animal's life. Um, now, on my opinion of when it's acceptable and when it's not, for an example here, I'm going to use uh, Mark from Mark's Tarantula as an example. I hope you don't mind me using you, Mark. But he was given Fang for a while. Fang, if you didn't know, was a tarantula that had no fangs. Now, if it has no fangs, it cannot eat. But that doesn't mean that tarantula should have been euthanized, and Mark didn't. What he did is he found a way. That spider was still mobile, it was still healthy, it was still alive, it just could not consume the prey without its fangs. So he would have methods of cutting up crickets and things to allow the tarantula to suck the insides out, suck the juices out of those animals so that it could then molt out and regrow its fangs. So that is to me a perfect example of good keeping. A lazy keeper might have just ditched that tarantula. I'm not saying all keepers would be able to save their tarantulas in that instance, but try. To me, as long as you try with the animal, that's what's important. But when it comes down to a point where the animal cannot or will not eat, cannot or will not drink, and is completely immobile so that it can't get to a food source, to me, that is when it is time to let an animal go. If there is a chance for it to become mobile again after molting, but it's still eating or drinking, then try and hand rear it the best you can. But if you're set with all three, like I'm about to show you here, that, in my opinion, is when it's okay to let that animal go. No matter how much you don't want it to go, no matter how much you feel you can save it, there is a point where you know that animal is just suffering and waiting to die. Now, if you've got younger audiences watching this, I know I do have a few. If you're not into seeing something like this, if you think it's best for your children not to watch something like this, turn it off. I, it, it is just a stick insect that I'm showing you, which has a lot of meaning to me, but to some people it's just a bug. You know what I mean? So this is on your personal preference where you allow younger people to watch this next clip. So as you folks know, or I hope you know by watching my channel, when a stick insect molts, it does so upside down and comes out of its old skin. So this here is a molt. So this is what this animal came out of. And this here is a stick insect of the Phrygonistra genus. A lovely girl, but she had an issue with her molt. Let me get you a better look at her so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So I've just laid her down in front of me and as you can see she can move, she's got some movements in her legs but she cannot upright herself. She is missing a couple of legs at the front. So she's got one, two, three, four legs, she should have six. Her body is in a permanent bow, you can straighten the tail a little bit but she can't seem to do much herself. It's her front legs that are missing there and how she's in this position 
all of the time. I can move it a little bit, but she is pretty much stuck like this. She still has a little bit of grip on her feet, so she can sort of hold on with one foot. I've tried placing her on branches a few times and one foot is all she seems to be able to control properly. But yeah, she's, she's not gonna make it, guys. Now, I have tried putting her head near water and she won't even attempt to drink. Now, her mouth parts are all okay. Or at least they seem to be. Because she can move them, but she's not taking to water. I've had her near leaves. She's not taking to eating leaves. I've even tried removing the harder outside of the leaf for her so she can just eat at the angle she's at and she's not taking to it. And animals aren't silly, guys. They know when their time's up and they tend to not eat when they know they're going to go. What I believe happened with this girl was during her molt, I did actually see her hang upside down for a molt before I went to bed. During her molt, she fell on her drying period, meaning she got out of her original skin, aside from the front legs, which would have got caught in the skin. So she popped those legs off, they can remove them, and then she fell. And I know this because in the morning, she was on the floor in this position. Now, after they molt, their bodies are soft. They are easily crippled. So the stick insect needs to hang there upside down until it's dried out and it can move all of its limbs properly. Falling like this and buckling on the floor will allow the body to harden in this sort of shape and give them non-maneuverability of certain limbs. And in this case, her head is always bowed, her whole body is always bowed, she's got some movement of a leg or two and that's it. Unfortunately, molting problems do occur in stick insects. Sometimes it's to do with your humidity levels. You must always maintain a certain humidity level to allow the stick insect easier molts, but these guys are prone to getting legs stuck. That's legs stuck in molts. That's them dropping legs as well, which is a defense mechanism. Uh, if you hold these a lot, quite often they can drop their legs, so I try not to handle them very much but it is an issue with such long-legged thin phasmids. And quite often they will still die that same day, but this girl here, excuse my phone, has been in this position for three days now and I can't bear to watch her suffer anymore. So in my opinion, what I think is the right thing to do is to euthanize this girl, to stop her suffering any longer. Now, I'm not going to show you the process of it, but I will tell you the most humane way I know, and that is to pop her in a little tub and pop her in the freezer. I know some people say, why don't you just stamp on them? It's a quick death. But you stamp on them and they still happen to be alive, just immobile. They're suffering more. You know, by putting them in the freezer, from what we can gather, basically puts them into a sleep state. I know this with flies, if you feed mantis, if you keep mantis and you have flies, put them in the fridge for a bit. When they're colder, they become more immobile. You can actually pick them up and feed your mantis with them. And in the freezer, she would go into a sort of hibernation type state, basically fall asleep and pass away, to our knowledge. We can't prove that, but that's what we believe. And I know some people may think that this is incredibly cruel, but what's more cruel? to let her suffer when I've tried for three days already to allow her to regain strength, which may not sound like a lot guys, but in the life of an invertebrate, three days is quite a long time. And three days without her consuming food is gonna make her weaker and weaker and weaker, and she will pass either way. So as I said, I'm not gonna show you how it's done. I'm just gonna tell you in a tub, in the freezer, I will leave her there until she passes. And um, you can bin them, but now I've got a garden, I'm going to bury her and allow the circle of life to continue. So um, I've got a few more of this species, but let's say bye to this beautiful girl here. Sleep well.
So uh, it's done now, she's in the freezer, just waiting for her to pass quietly. And uh, to a lot of people it's just a bug, like I said, and I, I get that, that's, that's how a lot of people are raised, you know, kids run around killing ants' nests, stamping on things, and it is a mentality, then it's a mentality that I'm trying to change amongst people. I'm not saying we all have to be emotional over them, but to us as keepers, they are our pets, and each and every one has a meaning to us. Their lives are important to us, so it is sad for me. Even though I've got four or five more her size up in the realm, it's, it's still sad for me to be the one that's put her to sleep. You know, it's, it's always difficult. But I'm not gonna go on anymore. I'm sorry if this video was a bit talky and a little bit dull for some of you, but I just felt it was important to put my opinion as a keeper across about euthanization of your invertebrates. So for me, if they can't eat, they can't drink, they're gonna die anyway, and you've tried everything you can, to me, put them to sleep and stop them suffering no matter how difficult it might be to do so. But I'm not here to judge if you folks would rather go about it in a different method or if you are, sorry my phone keeps going off, or if you are in a completely different mindset, that's perfectly cool. We are individuals, we all think and feel differently. But if you wanna see what else dwells within the realm, make sure to pop back weekly for multiple videos. I'll try and do a happier video next time, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope this helped some of you understand. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.